Incoming transmission. Picture this. A recording studio somewhere far, far away. Welcome watchers of Illusion to my Castle of Confusion on the 27th of September and I'm looking at an Amiga game and it's one of those games that you're going to enjoy and I'm doing this from Mr. Phil Croxford who should be listening or watching actually. Uh, for all the you Dizzy fans out there this is the Amiga version of Treasure Island Dizzy and it's a little bit different to what you might remember from the 8 bits which is not a bad thing but let's crack on and have a look at it. It was certainly very colourful, but you'd kind of expect that from the Amiga. This was an Amiga 500 release, so if you had an Amiga 500 onwards, this game, I th actually I think it had trouble with the 500 plus with the compatibility, but uh, oh well, that's a minor niggle. Uh, this game's great. Like it, like it a lot. The fact that Dizzy is in full colour, which is great, and actually love the fact you can actually see the red boxing gloves and his little red boots. I think that's quite cool. You can see, if you're familiar with the 8 bits, you can see that there's quite a lot of things that aren't there. Uh, such as the window panel that you could take out on the 8-bit version is gone. So your coins are a little bit more obvious to find in this version, so it would seem. Uh, there's a hell of a lot going on in the background. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It seems very, very busy. Uh, the uh, ominous traps are still there in their, all their glory. So you're still going to need to jump to find out where they are. Which, again, isn't a bad thing. Now, the one thing that I do notice here that they fixed from the 8-bit uh, versions is when you picked up a coin in the 8-bit versions, you've uh, tended to find that your inventory would then knock up a notch, which I think was a coding bug but they've uh, managed to sort that out with the Amiga version. There's a few differences here as well. Now, if you, if you remember in the 8-bit version where you had to kick the rock across and it dropped the platform, now you've actually got a little bit more... This actually makes more sense, to be honest. Uh, you can see the hook over on the right-hand side there. You go and attach the weight to the hook, and it will actually drag the platform down. I kind of like that. It's made a bit more sense. Um, Presentation-wise, this game's absolutely lovely. And as an Amiga owner, you probably would have loved this, especially if you were a Cody's fan. Um, you would have enjoyed this game. A lot. There you go. Attach the weight, and it pulls the platform down. Great. I wasn't uh, overly convinced with the uh, dropping a rock on the uh, or kicking a rock across the platform. Didn't make much sense to me. But there you go. That's made much more sense. Love it. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is the music is completely different to the 8-bit versions. So I'm going to shush for a second, just so you can hear this. I mean, it's jolly enough, isn't it? I kind of I like the 8-bit uh, version music myself. There's more of my uh, I do that's more my favourite uh, theme tune. But this, you know, this is catchy as hell, and uh, you will be you will be whistling this around the house. I can guarantee you. Hello to Gareth Knight as well, by the way, who also requested some dizzy games. It's nice to be back on the old dizzy front. But you can see there's there's a lot going on, um, probably a lot more going on than there was in the 8 bits, but you can understand that because the uh, Amiga had a lot more memory to deal with and the developers had more to play with, so that's cool. The animation's nice, you can see the walking animation of Dizzy is very cool. Smooth as, so there you go. Um, the screen still screen by screen, which is nice, um, I'm glad they sort of did that. It does remind me so much more of a comic book style game um, rather than the sort of the uh, the scrolling, side-scrolling ones. I think it's quite cool. Um, so I'm going to play through this a little bit and see what we can do. Um, and I will be providing you with an all-tasty cheat code later on in the game. If you haven't already know what the cheat code is, stay tuned, because I will be inputting it later. So there we go. So we've got the Grave Digger Spade and a Rubber Snorkel, where we know what the snorkel's for. The other, oh, the other thing to mention... As you can see here, we've got those insects flying around. Well, they weren't in the 8-bit versions either. So they've actually added more of a... Oh, there you go. So I can't use that Gravedigger spade there. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, but yeah, you can see that it's a lot more... It's a lot busier. And uh, that, that coin was randomly hidden behind that bush. But I didn't need to pick the bush up. Yeah. And on those 8-bit versions on this screen, there was a bush right there. Um, I think... And that guy wasn't there either. I kind of like the fact they've put extras in keeps you on your toes a little bit more which is quite nice um very nice beach uh, layout here 
that's quite cool. But yes, if you remember in the 8-bits, if you picked up a coin, sometimes it would actually just in inadvertently make you drop something you didn't want to drop. Nine times out of ten, it was the rubber snorkel while you were underwater, and that's like instant death. You only have one life, again. Um, I think Actually, I think the one life thing was a was some form of bug. If I remember from talking to um, the Oliver twins about this, I do believe they said that the one life thing wasn't intentional, but I think it was something to do with the coding. So there's a little bit of uh, back history for you. But yes, Dizzy has one life, so to do this in one go, you can give yourself a massive pat on the back if you manage to do this in one go. I have actually completed this once or twice on the spectrum, and by God, it's a challenge, I can tell you. But once you know where everything is and you've got those dodgy jumps sorted out, it's not quite a, such a bad thing. Um, now on the uh, on the Spectrum version, Amstrad C64, the what you needed was a saltwater shovel, and I'm going up to get the salt sh saltwater crowbar. So I've got, and there's that crab. Now he was an absolute bugger to jump over on the uh, 8-bit versions. So let's see how how much of a bugger he is to jump over on the 16-bit. Let's have a go. Can't even get onto that rock to jump up there. This is just frustrating. Uh, oh no, <laughs> falling off again. I'm I'm really good at this. I remember this being an absolute pain in the backside, actually, on the Specky version. Um, but it's always great to have you guys along. Thanks for the uh, channel support, by the way. You guys are awesome. Uh, it's nice to have new subscribers along also. I hope you're enjoying the content. And that is just slightly put in the wrong place, but that's fine. Right, here we go. Jump over crab. Oh, job done. Not quite as tricky. I like the scrolls. They're quite fun. Um, the official pogo place. Not quite sure what that means. Um... You can see Dizzy actually has a little bit of a better range of jump in this version as well. Which is also nice, because that crab caused so many damn deaths. And the other problem is you've got to frequent the two islands for a while anyway, so you've got to be careful. But um, once you've got your salt, wa salt water shovel or crowbar, uh, you don't need to go up there again. But it's always frustrating if you manage to get really far in the game, and then do something stupid like jump over a crab and then get eaten by said crab. But yes, the puzzle element is the same. The um, All of the puzzles you've got to do all seem to be exactly the same as the 8-bits. I do, do like the addition of um, extra enemies, and I really do like the addition of... Um, I think the screens seem to be more expanded, so you've got a lot more going on at once. I kind of like that as well, little piranha fish there. They will kill you if you jump on them, by the way. Ah, I think that's probably where I need the... Uh, Grave digger shovel, actually. So leave the snorkel there. Each object you get in the game normally has a, uh, a role to play. Not always, though. I think there were a couple of red herrings in the uh, Specky game. But there you go. Right. Let's see. So there's the there's the guy you're gonna give the thirty coins to, I think, to get the boat to get off the island. Or oh, he gives you something. There is another guy you gotta give coins to. Now I'm gonna give you that cheat code. So you need to type "I can fly" in all capitals. The screen will flash. When it's done, and all you do is push up on the joystick, and you can fly. So you can actually investigate the entire game. Now, only use that if you get completely stuck. You can still die, so don't get cocky with it. But um, yes, you can now fly across all the screens. Some of them are completely blank, but you will have great fun having a fly around the maps. It's quite cool to see how it was all done. Anyway, guys, that's Treasure Island Dizzy on the Amiga. I hope you've enjoyed the review. I'll be back soon with a brand new one. Bye bye. <laughs>